Hello. This is a 3D model that we're going to turn into an etched hologram using my Lowrider 3 CNC and a free app that I've forked, extended, and shared. Links in the description. I'll also be sharing information about how you can make similar projects and reveal some of my mistakes and learnings along the way. This video came about after watching and being inspired by Steve Mould's uh, recent great video describing how etched holograms work and how to make them by hand, uh, just using a, a, a compass to make curved scratches on glossy surfaces. Uh, it turns out that the glints of light reflect off of the scratches in a way where you see 3D shapes that move and rotate in unexpected ways even as you uh, change your, your viewing angle. Uh, the lighting conditions have got to be just right for you to be able to fully appreciate the effect. Now, although these are holograms, they're different and less detailed than holograms that typically will like, split, bounce, and converge uh, laser beams to create interference patterns onto the, the film being developed. Uh, but anyway, some folks and myself on the V1 Engineering Forum thought being able to see and see holograms would be kind of cool. Uh, so I started digging around uh, to learn more. Well, it turns out a bunch of other people also thought this was cool a long time ago and have already created research papers, presentations, and projects, uh, including Mike Miller, who created and shared his abrasion hologram app that I ended up forking. Cheers, Mike. After tinkering with, extending, and speeding things up, I, I think my fork's ready for curious folks uh, to, to try out. Within just a few minutes, you can load a 3D model STL file, uh, position and tweak how you want the hologram to render before exporting an SVG image file that contains all the uh, etch hologram details that your regular CNC laser engraving software will be able to understand and use to create the tool paths that will be used to actually engrave your, your material. So with that context, let's make some etched holograms. Start the HoloZens app, open up your 3D model, position and orientate it in a way that you're happy with. I find having a flat surface at the front is good for having the arcs, not make a big mess of things. Play around with the viewing angle, look at it from various angles, make sure you're happy with how much it's going to rotate on you. And then you'll want to maybe just temporarily disable the lines and profiles just so you can appreciate how the glints of light are going to reflect off of those arcs. Once you're happy with everything, export as a SVG. Now to help make the front face pop, I find it helpful to actually enable the profiles so you get that nice outline which can help even if you've got less than ideal viewing and lighting conditions. Next, let's use Etzelcam to turn the SVG into toolpath that our CNC can engrave. Until recently, I was using Etzelcam 11.245. At some point in the past, they used to be able to open an SVG directly. For whatever reason, they won't open, but they will open in 12, which is currently still in beta and available to download from etzelcam.de. If you scroll down, you'll be able to find the version 12. Maybe by the time you're watching this, it'll be released. If the SVGs aren't opening for you in your current version of Etzelcam, consider going to this website and checking to see if there's a newer version that you can use. So then, with Etzelcam 12, or some version that's able to open the SVG, when you do get to open that SVG, you can adjust the width and make sure it's the right dimension for what it is that you're going to engrave. So with that SVG open, if I hold down the middle mouse button and drag across the mouse, I can just double check the dimensions are about where I want them to be. If it's not the right size, then you can always do um, a resize of your, your drawing. But assuming everything's good, the next step is to create tool paths for each of these lines that are on here. Now, because there's so many, you don't want to have to select each of these uh, lines. It's just gonna be crazy. So fortunately, there is an automatic object creation tool built into Etzelcam and if it's not already set to engrave, select those checkboxes and then select OK. But before you do that, you should have checked 
to make sure you had the correct tool selected, which I did not. And so now I will have to wait. I could kill the app, but I'll let this run through so you can see the mistake that's gonna happen here. So you can see these very large toolpaths were created because a three width bit size was selected. That's not what we want. We want to engrave, which has got a very fine point, which we've put in here is 0.1. So what I can do is just select everything and then change the bit to be 0.1. Or what I could have done at the very beginning was select that bit before selecting for automatic uh, en engraving objects to be created. So now that we've done that, if I select any of these lines or arcs, I'll, I'll be able to see that the engraving setting has been selected and I'll want to set the depth. Uh, I can do that now, or when I save the CNC program, I'll be prompted for the depth. So if I just say, okay, I'll just save to the default location. So for an engraving, especially a specular hologram engraving, you want it to be really light. So for many of the videos that you've seen, I had 0.5 millimeter depth, which I think honestly was, it was creating more deep gouges than scratches. So this is something I still need to play around with, but assuming I've got a very level, well-surfaced, even flat bed, and I think quarter of a millimeter, maybe even less, would be better for getting very light scratches, which will not be super obvious when you're looking straight ahead, but will be you know, deep enough to catch those glints of light. And that's really it for saving. Once we've got that G-code file created, we will just carry that across to our CNC, plug it in and get it to execute that file. All right, so I'm using this diamond tipped RDZ engraver, spring loaded with adjustable tension. I went with 90 degrees instead of 60, thinking that the, the wider angle means it's gonna be more likely to last longer. There's a quarter of an inch collet or a shank on this thing, which is kind of interesting because it means that you, you could put this in a, a router and you know, if you really need to gouge out some material with some force, you, you can absolutely do that with this guy. That's not what we're gonna be doing though here. I, I'm just wanting to make light scratches. There's a lot of interesting projects people are using this for, so it is $60. That That is for the initial bit. You can get replacement tips that can be inserted in there, I think for like half the price. And, and there are cheaper versions that you can get, but I figure, you know, this is something I can use for other projects, not just for the holograms over time. All right, so to mount the engraver bit onto the machine, I created this two part drag bit mount and these thin sections here help to allow the bit to flex up and, and down. So that allows us to have more control over the pressure of that diamond bit in going into the material. The second part here is removable because I've designed the profile of this thing for also being useful for drag knives, for people that wanted to cut you know, vinyl or paper or, or something with a knife. So yeah, that's there. And then more recently I updated this because I didn't like how much flex there was in the XY axis. So the, the latest version that I just pushed up there, it's got the, the, the flexible sections of this encased in thick amounts of material. This is still just one piece that's printed in place and the, the springiness parts will break away. You just force, force that to go up and down and wear in the, the part just within a few minutes of messing about with that. And you know, it'll be good to go and you'll have something that's nice and flexible in the Z axis, but pretty rigid in the X and Y. So yeah, that's there. And I've shared the STLs on printables, but if you wanna remix the Fusion 360 model, I've shared the files in this GitHub repo. You might wanna do that if maybe you're using a slightly different engraver bit that's got a different shank width and, and length. So have at it. Please share anything that you create that you think might be useful for others. Once you're done, printed and mounted, this is how everything is going to look. On the Z axis, the gantry in this position, it's pretty low down. It's almost bottomed out. So it, it might be worth putting some you know, stock or something underneath your thin material, let's say you're engraving sheet metal or something super thin, you, you're probably gonna wanna raise up the, the bit so it doesn't bottom out during the engraving. But that's all the parts you need, the engraver bit and some way to mount it that results in 
a nice flexible z-axis so that you can get those light scratches but rigid in x and y so the drag the bit isn't wandering around too much as it's being dragged around on the surface All right, so I don't know, man. Like, I think the math is sound. Maybe the scratches are too deep. Maybe there's not enough scratches. It works. So that's the one I just did now with the, for whatever reason, this guy is more prominent. I have to look and see what was different. So for this second guy, I did lose some steps on the Z axis and I was, I, I lost the steps kind of after half of the, v or a significant portion of the v was done i don't know if that i tried to make up for it by messing around with putting uh, some grease on there and the spanner as well you know i mean it yeah, i just have high hopes for this thing wow look at on the left that's kind of cool is it better if the light is off to the side yeah kind of partial success that's what i'm calling this guy man it makes me want to get a laser Makes me want to get a laser. Hey, if anyone wants to give me a laser, give me a laser. Thank you. <laughs> I'll review it and everything.